Hey guys and welcome back and today I want to talk about a super duper duper budget NAS. I want to talk about the new Synology DS120J. Released a very short while ago, this new one bait from Synology is a tiny, tiny, tiny step up from its predecessor, the DS-119J from Synology. Arriving at around 85 to 90 pounds, this NAS without a hard drive or SSD inside will probably set you back in your different country around about 100 quid, whatever the quid is in yours, dollars, euros, whatever. And as far as a Synology NAS goes, that still makes it one of the lowest price Synology NASs out there. And with Synology still being the brand that people flock to for the most user-friendly NAS solutions, it becomes appealing to a number of you, and probably some of you watching this video right now are wondering about, is this NAS worth your money? Because you, when you type Synology NAS into Google or YouTube or Amazon or eBay, whatever where you want to look these things at, the prices come back at you at two, three, four, five, six hundred pounds and more. And so suddenly you see a NAS like this for a hundred quid and you think, hang on, that's really cheap. Is it too good to be true? Now, that is what this video is about today. I'm doing a hardware review of the 120J. I'm going to be doing a software overview and a follow up. But today I want to talk about that. I want to talk about, is this too good to be true? Because, you know, there's a reason the DS120J is 120, uh, 100 quid, give or take. The reason is because of the architecture and the build. Compared to other Synology NASs, it's not just a little less powerful in terms of hardware, it is noticeably low in power. With every other range from Synology, even their 4-bay J-series and 2-bay J-series taking big leaps in evolution, this still seems to be hanging around at the back. Now, the 120J arrives with a dual core Marvel CPU, and that's 800 megahertz per core. Not only is it less than one gigahertz per core, but on top of that, it's a 32-bit ARM processor. What that means in real terms is it's a lower architecture chip and will deal with processes in a far less efficient manner and is by no means graphically enabled. On top of that, it arrives with 512 megabytes of DDR3L memory. That's right, not even a gig of memory. Now, what that means in practical terms is you've got a CPU that isn't particularly well equipped for 2019 and 2020. And on top of that, you've got a very small amount of memory for what is ostensibly modern data processes inside a NAS. You wouldn't buy a PC these days or a laptop or a, a tablet with half a gig of memory. So it's very surprising to see those kind of specifications being thrown about on a NAS. That said, last year we did our hardware overview of the DS-119J and the software overview. And despite it having even less memory than this device, it ran DSM surprisingly well. We were able to run a couple of cameras in Surveillance Station. We used Synology Drive and Synology Moments on that device. Even streamed media, although Plex Media Server, forget it, that's not happening with this device. It's still a good NAS, but as a first NAS, it's interesting. And as a backup NAS, it's interesting. But if you are looking for a pure DSM experience, this isn't the one. This isn't the NAS that's going to give it to you. Before I go any further, let's take a look at this NAS, shall we? I've talked for quite a while there. What an intro. Now, inside this device, when you purchase it for the first time, the retail box, you, of course, get your Synology 120J, a one-bay NAS solution. On top of that, you've got your quick start installation guide. And with regards to accessories, you've got screws for the chassis when take, uh, installing drives for the first time. We'll go through later on. You've also got a 36-watt PSU which has got, if you buy it from Span.com, a UK clip to attach to the end. But again, this 36 watt PSU kind of gives into another big um, advantage on this device to do with power consumption. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a moment. You've also got an RJ45 Cat5e cable for your network connectivity. And although the device isn't wireless, you can get a USB wireless dongle, and there's a number of them that are compatible on Synology's own list. And on top of that, hard drive screws for installing hard drive media inside your NAS. And that's your lot, really, for accessories. That's everything you get inside the retail box for this. And if we look inside, we can take a look at the NAS itself. So get that out of that wonderful foam stuff. Let's get that there. And there is our one bay NAS that weighs nothing. I mean, obviously, there's no hard drive inside there, 
but that is an exceptionally light NAS. Let's put that there so you can see it a little better on camera. It's very petite, it's very small, and in fact, if you do install a hard drive, there's a WD, Iron, uh, sorry, WD, Freudian slip, Seagate, um, Iron Wolf NAS drive there, and this is how big this device is in terms of the hard drive. There is very little in terms of space inside this device, and what there is in terms of space, it's largely designed for cooling. The device itself, and I'll stop saying the device, the DS120J arrives with that dual core CPU inside, although it is 800 megahertz, and that half a gig of memory. But on top of that, even though the internal specs seem largely underwhelming to a number of you, it's worth mentioning that a, a large amount of the design aesthetic of Synology NAS is featured on this device. For a start, you've got that Synology logo built into the side of the device, that is fully ventilated to allow air all the way through. On the side panel there, next to all the LEDs that give us real-time information about the system access, drive health, and system running, and if data is being accessed, there is a ventilation panel built into the side to make sure cool air passes through and out of the device. On the base of the device, we have even more ventilation to keep that drive nice and cool, and all of that is passive airflow assisted by the fan on the rear. There is no tray for removing drives because as this is a one bay NAS, hot swapping is completely off the table because the system software is running directly off that drive. So there is no instance where you would remove the drive while the device is in operation. Drives are installed by removing the side of the chassis that I'll show you in a bit. If we look at the rear of this device, we can see, if we bring that up to the camera, we can see a rear fan there and that rear fan is controlled by the system software and uh, it can be set automatically or manually for its rotations per minute to be increased or decreased as the system allows. And that fan, that small, very quiet fan, assists with the active airflow with all of those vents all around the device assisting passive airflow. There's also a 1GBE port built into the base of the device there, and that gives us one gigabit Ethernet connectivity, but you can forget about things like link aggregation and more than one GBE. This is not a NAS designed for users like that. On top of that, we've got two USB 2 ports, which I won't lie, disappoints the hell out of me, because despite this being a very budget NAS, I refuse to accept that the price difference between USB 2 and USB 3 makes any real world difference in terms of construction costs. And I venture is a means to make people pay a little bit more and create a tiered system. But that's my own conspiracy theory. Don't take it to heart. But the device does support a myriad of backup options, even though it is a one bay NAS. With hard drives arriving at 16 terabytes these days, these days, that means that this one bay can store 16 terabytes of storage, which is frankly insane. But you're putting all your eggs in one basket, aren't you, with this? Well, that's not exactly true. You've got multiple backup options, such as USB backups, where you can utilize um, an external USB drive, and that can back up some or all of the entire storage of the NAS onto a USB disk. And that can be an automatic scheduled backup as needed. You've also got network backups, thanks to Synology's backup software, um, Hyper Backup. And Hyper Backup allows you to back up to cloud services, other NASes, the USB drives, other areas of the NAS. There's a whole myriad of ways that you can back up. On top of that, let's go back to that earlier point about power consumption. This device utilizes a very small amount of power. And if you do make the frankly weird budget choice to install an SSD inside this device, the power consumption of this will frankly be incredibly small. Hopefully it's on screen right now. The um, power consumption, if you're running this off a UPS, even a standard, you know, very small UPS could run this thing practically for days based on its power consumption. So if you are in a situation where you're on a metered power connection or an intermittent power area where you get power outages frequently, or perhaps you're in a mobile home or um, a boat, you know, a houseboat or something like that, this could be a very good bas uh, NAS to have for a surveillance setup with multiple IP cameras or maybe for streaming media throughout your home, uh, throughout you know, devices in that mobile environment. Now, while you talk about surveillance, this does support Synology Surveillance Station application version 8.2 currently, and all of the features and functionality of the surveillance platform, which is pretty bloody impressive. And if you're a small shop or a business that has a few cameras dotted around, this could be just the device for you if all it's going to run is cameras. That said, it brings us back to that business of hardware. The device itself 
because it's only got half a gig of memory and that dual core 800 meg um, CPU 32 bit architecture, it can only support five active cameras at once. The device arrives with two camera licenses, which is good, but if you're going to add more cameras at around 25 to 30 quid a license each, I put it to you that that money is better spent on a more powerful NAS. So if you are going to run a surveillance setup, do bear in mind that you only get two camera licenses included with this. And if you want more cameras, then you'll be sp you'll be very surprised how much you'll have to spend. Three camera licenses alone would cost more than this NAS, which is a real problem for me. Um, now, in terms of the device with regards to multimedia and backups, it's very hard to fault it. If there's only one or two of you, like a small family, or just you yourself, where you've got a few devices in your, you know, your flat or something, and you want to enjoy your media on a TV here and an iPad there, this is going to be good for you. But the minute you start introducing multiple users accessing at once, that CPU will freak out. And the same should be said for backups. Running long-term backups with this device is going to use a substantial amount of that CPU. CPU utilization for simple backups is going to creep between 40 and 60% very, very quickly for just one active backup user. And the minute you're doing that, remember you're only accessing one drive of media, you are creating bottleneck upon bottleneck upon bottleneck. And the minute you have another active user trying to connect to the device or another device automatically connecting to it, you're going to see problems with everyone suffering and that half a gig of memory freaking out in the background. So again, know what you are buying because for a hundred quid this is a good good NAS for a hundred quid for a Synology NAS for a basic easy backup or one person streaming solution up to 1080p this is a nice little NAS but if you want more than that or you're not patient this is not the NAS for you have you ever been on the tube and tried to use your phone using weak wi-fi your power of your device is fine but the wi-fi lets you down but you eventually accept that it's not about power, it's about speed in that instance. This is the, the reverse of that argument. This can do things, but it's not going to do it quick. Even when you install the hard drive inside this device, installation of a hard drive of this is very, very straightforward. There's a SATA connection based inside the device, right here, there's that fan there, but there's a SATA connection there, and you install your OneDrive and then you get the device up and running. So the physical installation is incredibly straightforward. But the software installation, and every single time you have to boot this thing up, it takes time. It is not a fast booting device going by the DS119J. And on top of that, you're not gonna be able to access it with many, many users at once. And if that is something that you need your NAS to do, whether it's for backups, streaming or more, this is not for you. So again, first time users or limited backup users, this will suit your needs. Everyone else, go higher. Go for a 118 or perhaps go for the currently DS218J if you're budget conscious or bigger. But this has been the hardware overview and review of the DS120J. I hope you enjoyed it or found it useful. If you've got any questions about this device, do let me know in the comments. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more and stay tuned for the software overview coming very, very soon. I'll see you guys next time.